Good afternoon and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday, the 19th of October 2020, and the time has just gone 12.04 British summer time. And it's been a fairly quiet start to the European trading session. Uh, volatility has been fairly low, uh, even though there's been a few interesting stories uh, during the rounds. Um, one of the main ones is the economic indicators that were, that were announced from China overnight um, were, were encouraging. Um, although they didn't have a huge impact on the market. Uh, in the third quarter, um, the Chinese economy grew by 4.9% on an annual basis. And that was a big improvement on the 3.2% growth that was posted in the second quarter. So it shows that the recovery is, 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 is picking up. But keep in mind, economists were expecting a reading of 5.2%. So it did come in below expectations. Um, for September, retail sales and industrial production both showed decent growth on the month. Uh, they, you know, it kind of confirm, you know, it adds weight to the, to the view that the economy, the, the, the rebound and the recovery is actually picking up in terms of pace and momentum. It also came in higher than, ex than expected, those two readings. Um, but there hasn't been a huge lot of excitement. Um, China is a big importer of, uh, of commodities, things like copper and, and, um, and oil. And with that, we haven't seen a huge move in either in the commodity space. Um, they, they are a, a bit higher, but not, not, not as much, not up as much as one might think, given what's going on. Also in the news, uh, the British pound is, do, is doing quite well. Um, it was there was a report a report in the last day or so that the um, that the UK our UK government are considering diluting or watering down the internal markets bill. And this is a kind of controversial bill uh, in relation to the kind of which could um, which could basically be in breach the in, in breach uh, international law. And if it's the potential watering down or the, or, the, or the potential dilution of that bill would be to try and get a deal with the EU. So it seems as a sign that a bit of compromise has been made on the British side. Keep in mind, at the back end of last week, the British Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, said you know, to, to people and businesses, be prepared for a no-deal scenario. But in the, last, in the last, say, 48 hours, we've heard about the, the possible watering down of the internal markets bill. So kind of this is intentionally, by the looks of it, the UK government are, are going to leave the door open to the possibility of a deal. Uh, so that's that's had a, had a big impact on the British pound. That's been pushing higher. Um, Eurozone confidence con stocks and Eurozone stocks have been unusual today. Uh, I haven't, we've, we've had a bit of a, an IT glitch on Euronext. And so with that, trading in the, of the cash equities, the actual individual shares on many of the big European indices, uh, European, big European stock markets, hasn't actually been working. Uh, it's back trading now, but for a good chunk of the morning, that was missing. So, you know, the index futures were trading all, all the time, but the actual individual sh underlying shares were not. And when you have one but not the other, you don't really get a proper picture of the sentiment. Lastly, uh, Nancy Pelosi uh, of the Democrats, uh, the House Speaker, uh, basically said is optimistic that the Democrats and the Republicans can strike a deal, but at the same time, the kind of self-imposed deadline is for tomorrow. Uh, if if uh, you know if this is Pelosi saying that if the Republicans want to get a deal before the U.S. presidential election, which is in November, um, it's one of those things we continue to hear about, about. Both sides have differences. Both sides are optimistic. Both sides are trying, but you know this is it's kind of the same old story. Lots of talk, but no, not a whole lot of actual political progress. But because because uh, Nancy Pelosi said she's optimistic. We're seeing a tick higher in U.S. index futures. So traders are kind of not betting against, uh, don't appear to be betting against that outcome. But at the same time, there's a lot of people out there that are skeptical that we're going to have a compromise made uh, between now and tomorrow. So as always, I'll give a quick run through of the week ahead article, and then I go through the major markets, indices, currencies, and commodities. Uh, if you go to our website, cmcmarkets.com. Under insights, you have under latest news analysis, you'll find the weekend article. As I mentioned, we have the Chinese figures were, were out overnight. Tomorrow, we have third quarter numbers out from Netflix. Uh, this is going to be in, in focus, given that because of lockdowns and restrictions, uh, we, we, we saw the last couple of quarters very strong and better than expected viewer subscription numbers from Netflix. That's going to be back in focus. People are going to be wondering what's going on with production plans 
what's going to be going on with, with the growth rate of subscribers. Have we kind of reached saturation point? Is it tapering off? These are the sort of questions traders will be asking. Rickett Benkheiser, uh, they make a lot of, kind of household goods, some of which are actually kind of you know, cleaning products. Uh, they have third quarter figures out tomorrow. Uh, on Wednesday, we have the Beige Book, kind of a snapshot of the what's going on with the US economy. On Wednesday night, after the US closed, we're going to hear from Tesla. Obviously, their share price has been very volatile in, in recent months. So any updates in relation to production forecasts, what have you, uh, is, going to be, is going to be in play. Microsoft have uh, Q1 numbers out on Thursday. Their cloud business has, has done very well in recent quarters. And obviously, you're going to, like I said, cloud computing has become even more popular uh, in the last few months. Uh, Unilever, uh, kind of well-known kind of uh, household goods brand, uh, not too dissimilar to Rekka Benkheiser. They have third quarter numbers out on Thursday. Amazon, who basically have cleaned up uh, because of the pandemic and the kind of online retail world. They've got third quarter numbers out uh, on, on Friday. Uh, we also have an update from Barclays uh, on Friday. So this, so U UK banks, uh, we've heard from US banks. Uh, we're going to be hearing from, U from UK banks um, in the next, obviously, obviously Friday with Barclays. And then and, and not, too, and not, not too long after that, we'll, we'll be hearing from Royal Bank, uh, sorry, NatWest, NatWest, NatWest Group, rather, uh, and Lloyds and the likes. And as always, people are going to be focusing on what's the deal with the trading desk, how much money is Barcap making in terms of its trading desk, but also any relation, any, any uh, provisions in relation to potential bad debts. Also on Friday, we have um, the flash PMI numbers out uh, from, Fran from, the UK, from, from the UK, France and Germany. And we also have UK retail sales. Now this is, this is going to be interesting because it'll give us a flavor for how, how bullish or not, how optimistic or not be, be it the case, UK consumers are. So starting off with the indices, starting off with the FTSE 100, we can let's take a look now. So the FTSE 100 hit a four month high in, in, in June, it hit its highest level since June. Um, apologies, at a three month high, at its highest level since March. But since then, it's been a fairly kind of clear and obvious downward trend. We have been pushing lower. Um, what we hold below this blue line here, the 50 moving average, which comes into play at 5,980. What holds below that metric is likely we could see the kind of broader negative trend continue. But keep in mind, we seem to have found decent support in this zone here, the kind of 5,800 down to 5,767. So we've been on a nice series of lower highs along here, but we haven't been printing lower lows. So it seems to me that this area could act as a bit of a, has, this area has acted as a support recently. If we continue to hold above that metric and don't create lower lows, we could stand a chance of heading back up towards 6,000, just, just beyond the 50 moving average. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at retesting the highs of mid-October. And if we take off the highs of mid-October, traders will then be looking up towards the highs of mid-September in around 6,126. And if we go beyond that, then, they, then the highs of mid-August will, uh, will then be on the cards. If you do manage to kind of turn lower on ourselves, keep an eye out for 5,800 down towards 5,000. 767. If we have a break below that, that'll be quite significant because on a few occasions this zone acts as support. If you have a break below that, it could take us back down toward this area here, around 5,660. Take a look at what's going on over in Germany and the DAX. So the German market has been rebounding for the last number of months since late March. It was in uh, early September, it hit its highest level since February, so it is a seven month high. In, uh, in, sept in September, but even though we've had a fairly decent, you know, overall correct correction and we've bounced back, the highs of mid-October didn't really, didn't retest really the highs or take out the highs of mid-September, but we do appear to be kind of creating um, higher lows. So the bias is still to the upside. Notice how on a few occasions the market traded below this yellow line here, the 100-day moving average. And there's a few occasions where they traded below it, but it, on those, particular day, on those particular days, it's always managed to actually close above it, even though it has traded below it. So if you can hold above the 50-day moving average, it's likely that the broader upward trend is going to continue. If you press on higher from here, because we're currently around 12,906, if you press on higher from here, we could be looking at 
heading, heading back up towards the mid-October highs in around 13,191. If you go beyond that, we can then be looking at up heading up toward this zone, the highs of mid-September uh, in around 13,277. And then beyond that, the highs of early September, the multi-month highs that were achieved uh, in early September will then be on the radar. If on the other hand, we do have a kind of move lower, if we take, if we, if we break below this area here, 12,600, that could be, that could, could be, a, could be a sign that we're heading back down towards this general zone here of, um, 12,339, uh, down to kind of 12,300 down to, down towards this red line here, the Trinity moving average, which comes into play at 12,149. Over in the US, starting off with the Dow Jones. So the Dow Jones in early September hit uh, its highest level um, since basically February. So it was about seven. So multi-month high was, was racked up. Seven-month high was achieved. We then had a fairly decent correction in the market. But notice how this yellow line here, the one day moving average, acted nicely as support. So we've been pushing higher since. Uh, granted, the highs of mid-October didn't retest the highs of mid-September, but notice how we are comfortably above this blue line, the 50 moving average, that comes into play just north of 28,000, in a 28,016. While we hold above that metric, it's likely that the broader upper trend is going to continue. If we press on higher from here and we retake the, the early, the mid-October highs, we can then be looking at heading back up towards here at 29,198. A pullback could find support from this blue line, the 50-day moving average at 28,016 or 28,000 itself, kind of um, round it down. Um, and if we do move below that, we could even find support from this yellow line, the 100-day uh, moving average at 27,189. Notice how it acted nicely as support um, in late September. And if a metric has been important in the past, it makes it more likely it'll be important in the future, but there are no guarantees. What's going on with the S&P 500? Fairly similar situation to the to the Dow Jones, whereby it's comfortably above the 50 moving average. This blue line here, we're probably not, we're sort of, you know, um, within we're in relatively close proximity to the October highs. If we press on higher, if we can hold above the 50 moving average, it's likely that the broader upper trend is going to continue. If you move on higher from here, we could be looking at testing the October highs. And if we go beyond that, we could then be looking at heading up towards the all time high that was achieved in early September. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking at heading up towards 3,600. Move to the downside, might find some support from this blue line, the 50 moving average in at 3,404. And a move below that could find support from this area here, the kind of the late, sorry, the early October lows. Uh, in, a, in around 3,341. And if we even go below that, this area at 3,300 could act as support. I talked about how the, the British pound is performing well this morning, given that the, the UK government seemed to kind of think that, you know, they could water down the internal markets bill as a way of getting a deal with the European Union. So we, therefore, we've had a decent move to the upside in the British pound. We can see here that the British pound hit a multi-month high in September. That was the highest level seen since uh, since December. So we're talking just shy of, you know, just basically an eight and a half, nine month high was achieved then. We obviously had a move to the downside, lower low, lower high, lower low. But in the last few weeks, it has been pushing higher. And the highs of mid-September, you know, were, were the highest seen, um, sorry, the highs of mid-October were the highest seen in over a month. We have gone back back below the 50 moving average, um, but we're kind of appear to be kind of retesting at the moment. If we, if we can get up back above the metric in at one spot 3015, we could be looking at targeting the highs of early October in at one spot 3082. And if we go beyond that, we could be heading up towards a kind of 132 area or up towards one spot 3269. Move to the downside could find support from this from this yellow line. The one really moving average in at one spot 2841. And even if you go below that, we could find support from this red line, the 20 really moving average in at one spot 2709. And to be honest, it's only really if you take out the lows here in the um on the uh, in late September in at one spot uh one spot 2675. So only really if you go below that. 
because then we begin to think, you know what, the, kind of the broad upper trend of the last few months has come to an end. Take a look now what's going on with the, with the uh, euro versus the US dollar. So in early September, the euro dollar hit its highest level in over two years. So it was a kind of strong upper trend. Uh, and then we reached, you know, a multi-year high. We had a fairly decent sized correction into late September. We've had the, kind of the bounce back, the rebound, whereby the highs of early October were the highest seen since late September. And you know, we're comfortably, comfortably above the lows of last week. If we press on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting the 50 day moving average in at one spot, 1794. To take all that, we could be looking at uh, retesting the highs of early October in at one spot, 1831. And then if you go beyond that, we could then be looking at targeting these highs here from mid-September mid in round one spot, 1917. And then if you go beyond that, we could then be looking at heading back up towards 120. And then we then we could be looking at back towards multi-year highs. Uh, support could come into play in this line here in at one spot 1684. We could see it on a few occasions this year, this zone acted as a support. And even if you go below that, support could, could uh, come into play from this area here that the late September lows in at one spot 1612. Uh, lastly, coming on to commodities, starting off with gold. To be honest, gold's been a bit uninteresting in the last few sessions. You know, gold hit. An all-time high in October, sorry, October in August, had a major kind of correction shortly afterwards. And ever since then, it's been kind of broadly trading a bit lower. Um, the last few, last few weeks and months, we've seen kind of, you know, a few kind of lower lows and lower highs. But we can see here that even though the ne this negative move has to be put in the context of this phenomenal upward move. So we've been sort of range bound the last few sessions, but we're, we're still above 1900. And if you look recently, even though we haven't been getting a pressing, put, putting much in the, but, but racking up many higher highs, we can see that the lows are getting higher. And, and if you can hold above 1900, you know, the broader upper trend is likely to continue. If you press on higher from here, we could be looking at retaking the 50 day moving average at 1925. Notice how it acted nicely as support on a few occasions not too long ago. So, and if you take out that level, we can then be heading back up towards the highs of mid-September in at 1976, sorry, 1973. And if you go beyond that, you know, the big psychological 2,000 bucks uh, mark will then come into play. Um, if, we, if we drift a bit lower from here, we could be looking at heading back down towards the recent lows in around 1882. And a move below that could take us back towards this yellow line here, the water day moving average in at 1873. And then it's only really, if you take out the more recent lows, the lows registered in late September uh, in at 1848, it's only really if you go below that, because then we begin to think, you know what, maybe we actually are in for, uh, for further losses. And lastly, <coughs> excuse me, lastly, coming out to Brent crude, December contract and the oil market. So the oil market is quite sensitive to perceptions of the, uh, the health of the global economy. Um, and obviously, with the coronavirus crisis kind of still, still raging, um, there are concerns about you know global demand. But you know, if you take a look at the price action, it's had a massive rally from uh, from late August, from late April uh, into August, where it hit its, its highest level um, since since March, since the crisis really kind of really kind of kicked in. Um, we've had a, quite a few mo aggressive moves to the downside, but notice we've been kind of pressing on higher. We were well above the lows of early October. At the same time, we haven't retaken the 50 moving average, this blue line here. So it seems to me that we're kind of a bit unsure of itself, but the broader trend for the last few months uh, is, still, is still to the upside. If we can retake the 50 moving average, uh, this which comes into play in at 43, spot 43, we could be looking heading up towards kind of 44, uh, up towards 44, spot 29, the highs of mid-September. And if you go beyond that, we could then be looking at heading up towards 45 and then move beyond that, could take us up towards the highs registered in late August in around 46 spot 88 up, up towards that zone. On the, on the downside, moves lower from here, could find some support from here in around 41 spot 22. And if you go below that, 40 bucks a barrel, you know, because it's a big number, uh, could act as support. And if you do take out this level here, the lows of early October, in our 38 spot 79 then we get worried about uh the kind of 
then we then we, we could begin to think, you know what, we are heading lower because we've had a lower low, a lower high, a lower low, a lower high, and potentially, you know, a lower. If we do break out down here, that'll be another lower low, and that could signify the you know, further losses are on the cards. And should that be the case, we can then look heading back down towards this area here in around thirty-six dollars per barrel. Uh, that's all for me this week. Thank you for listening. Have a good trading week and good luck.